Super Tuesday is behind us and Donald Trump is the presumptive GOP nominee. We face a stark reality. The 2024 elections are a battle between a Russian party and an American party. And the guy at the top of the GOP ticket is an alleged criminal with a history of fraud. His victory could lead to World War III. His defeat could lead to an insurrection. But even before we get there, the GOP is overseeing a crisis that could turn into a catastrophe by the time the election comes. Tonight, we're revealing how the GOP has been ensnared by a Russian-Chinese alliance bent on dismantling the American system, dismantling the idea of an American democracy. The world is at a turning point. And at the heart of this crisis is House Speaker Mike Johnson's continued halting of crucial military aid to Ukraine. It's really a betrayal of everything we as a nation promised the Ukrainian people at the start of this war. And it's a betrayal that Ukrainian President Zelensky is not letting go unnoticed. I had a meeting with him, with Speaker Johnson, and he also, I think, if, you, if we can trust each other, I... And this is, again, the question of just of how to trust partners or not. That's it, what I have to say. So when we spoke each other, he said that he will do everything to support Ukraine. And he is on our side. And he understands how heroic our people, our soldiers and civilians and etc. And he said that so his faith with us, he has and prayers with us. And he said that he will do it. And then after my meeting with him, I had met him was in the White House and also in the White House, the administration told me, yes, we have challenges with some voices in Congress. And I asked the president, really, I asked him that, a oh, place president, I'm asking you to help me and to help Ukrainian people. And please, can you do, I, I know that you have a lot of questions to each other and uh, because of the election period, challenging period, but can you put the pause? in your dialogue on, on, on these questions, one, 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 please one meeting with each other, with Democrats and Republicans. And please, can you have a deal? Because for us, it's very important. Yes, I, I gave this message. My message, I think that uh, Johnson had it and Biden also had it. So that's it. What can I do? I can't push speaker. This is his decision. but. I think he understands all the challenges. What do we have? Do you trust Speaker Johnson? I have to trust. I have to trust. President Zelensky has every right to be upset, and so do the Ukrainian people. And now we're hearing Ukrainian First Lady Olena Zelenska has reportedly turned down an invitation by Jill Biden to attend the State of the Union. This apparent snub is apparently related to an invitation to Navalny's widow to also attend the State of the Union. But she also declined that invitation. So this must be something else. Most troubling is what I'm about to share with you tonight. My investigation into Mike Johnson's Putin ties has unearthed a decade-long support by the now House Speaker for Russia's key policy positions. The year was 2013, a pivotal year in how Vladimir Putin viewed the world. In Ukraine, the Maidan revolution led to the ouster of Putin's puppet, Viktor Yanukovych, and a populist movement determined to move Ukraine into the Western fold. In Russia, Putin became obsessed with the theory that the population decline, a demographic issue, was his nation's biggest problem. To respond to it, he launched an anti-gay bill that sparked a violent program against gay people lasting a decade. So you had a real stark contrast then in the United States where gay marriage had just been legalized that year, and then Russia, where the anti-gay legislation allowed Putin to scapegoat the LGBTQ community for the mess he'd caused in Ukraine. So that was 2013. There's the Maidan revolution, and Putin then passes this anti-propaganda law, which is really an anti-LGBTQ law. Then the following year, in 2014, Putin doubles down on his anti-gay stance, and he offers the World Congress of Families, which is basically an anti-gay organization, an opportunity to host their Congress, not only in Moscow, but inside the Kremlin Palace. It's a direct signal to them and to everybody else 
that he supports the organization's agenda. Now, the WCF is an international Christian organization with close ties to Russia. It's been at the nexus of anti-LGBTQ and anti-abortion advocacy, aligning very closely with Russian's social policy. And we'll show you later on how these oligarchs that funded the World Congress of Families are very much the key oligarchs involved in the attack on democracy. You personally attacked you, your Christian counselor, a woman of God, attacked your profession. Um, what's your response to that? I used to be a school teacher and I loved that, but I just felt burdened for so many people and I felt the calling to, to go back to school to become a Christian counselor. And it's because I love people and I want to be able to help them through their times of struggle and suffering. And I love what I do. I absolutely love it. As a husband, I'll take any arrows. That's fine. But don't talk about my wife, for goodness sake. She's the kindest, sweetest person in the world. And anybody they interview anywhere at any stage of her life will tell you about this lady right here. I believe that God has placed him here. That's biblical. The Bible says he raises up leaders and he brings them down, right? So he... So I believe that God has him here for just this time. That's Mike Johnson and his wife acting like they are the victims of liberal wokeness. But in truth, these two people have had a lot to do with putting Putin's key anti-LGBTQ agenda to work around the world. They've sort of been his field commanders. Now, as we dig deeper into Speaker Mike Johnson's anti-LGBTQ advocacy, a disturbing picture emerges of an elected official whose views were not just aligned closely with Russian social policy, but we're actually in lockstep. Now, you'll recall the law in 2013 that Putin passed the anti-propaganda law, which turned out to be an anti-gay law in 2015. Johnson introduced his own version of that type of law as a state representative in Louisiana. It was called the Marriage and Conscience Act. And it basically allowed individuals and businesses to refuse services to same-sex couples based on religious objections and without facing any consequences from the state. Now, the timing of these two laws, Putin's 2013 law and Johnson's 2015 law, are very noteworthy because the leading group advocating for anti-gay legislation around the world at that time was the World Congress of Families, the same group that in 2014 held a significant meeting in Moscow in the Kremlin Palace at Putin's invitation. That was the year after the Duma passed Putin's law and the year before Johnson introduced his law in Louisiana. It was also their Trojan horse. The Russians were very smart. They used the LGBTQ and abortion legislation to get into the underbelly of America's churches, to get into the core of those evangelical churches from where they could start ministering all this nonsense about LGBTQ people. And that's how they were able to build such a strong base and strong connection with the evangelical churches and evangelical churchgoers in the United States. Though there are slightly different approaches, both Johnson's Marriage and Conscience Act and Putin's anti-propaganda law serve to legalize unequal treatment of LGBTQ individuals. Mike Johnson spent almost a decade writing, implementing, and legally defending the anti-LGBTQ legislative agenda of the WCF. So earlier on in the show, I explained to you how Mike Johnson had received $37,000 in donations from American Ethane that was really owned by two Russians named Volushin and Nikolaev, both very close to Vladimir Putin and very close to the Kremlin. In fact, Nikolaev had FSB clearance. Nikolaev is also the person who basically funded the Maria Butina operation. You'll remember that's the operation where Maria Butina, the spy for the Russians, infiltrated the NRA in order to subvert the, the Republican Party and to use the NRA as a funding arm for the GOP. That's all well and good. We've known that for a while. But as we factor in this new information around the World Congress of Families, which was affiliated to an organization for which Johnson worked for 10 years, the picture becomes even more striking about how close he is to some of these very critical Kremlin insiders, very critical Kremlin oligarchs. And one of them is a name you've heard a lot of before here on Narrative. His name is Konstantin Malofiev. He really is a very orthodox Christian oligarch, and he's been at the central point of a lot of the propaganda efforts around Ukraine 
and the United States as the attack on democracy has taken place. The other person is uh, Vladimir Yakunin, who is a very well-known, very high profile as CEO of all the railroads, or at least was in Russia, very close to Vladimir Putin. And his wife, Natalia Yukonina, who's actually a figurehead in the World Congress of Families. She's appeared there many times. She makes no bones about her desires and feelings about this issue and, and makes that very much her organization. So to have these real consummate insiders, these people who know um, Vladimir Putin very well, like Natalia Yukonina, Vladimir Yukonin, and Konstantin Malofiev, along with Nikolaev and Volushin, you have Johnson appearing to know all of the key people, because there's also, we haven't been able to fit them on this page here, but Roman Abramovich and Oleg Deripaska that are apparently tied to some of the American ethane money that was uh, sent to him. So the picture around Mike Johnson looks more and more like someone who's been quite active for the, the Russians for maybe a decade or longer. For the last eight years, I've been hammering home Russia's interference in our politics, law enforcement, and our courts. And now we're heading into 2024 with consequences that are far greater than any of the previous elections. And we could face a situation where the majority party, the speaker, and the president-elect are beholden to Vladimir Putin. Can we trust them to do the right thing? What happens if Mike Johnson's the speaker on the 6th of January, 2025? He can't be. We're facing a situation with respect to the 2024 election where it's an existential crisis. And we have to ensure that we don't have a situation where an election that might be thrown into the House of Representatives is overseen by a Republican majority. So you would prefer a Democratic majority? Uh, uh, I believe very strongly in those principles and ideals that have defined the Republican Party. But the Republican Party of today has made a choice and they haven't chosen the Constitution. And so I do think it's, uh, it presents a threat if the Republicans are in the majority in January 2025. It's a threat Cheney hopes she can be clear enough about to break through the political numbness. You say Donald Trump, if he is reelected, it will be the end of the republic. What do you mean? He's told us what he will do. People who say if he's elected, it's not that dangerous because we have all of these checks and balances don't fully understand the extent to which the Republicans in Congress today have been co-opted. The things that he has said and done in some ways are so outrageous that we have become numb to them. What I believe is the cause of our time is that we not become numb, that we understand the warning signs, that we understand the danger, and that we ignore partisan politics to stop him. The body of evidence against Johnson is growing. Just how much money was funneled to him through the World Congress of Families? We just don't know. He seems to have spent almost a decade working for an allied organization of the World Congress of Families, defending this type of legislation. And one has to ask, is it possible that the 2013 legislation that Vladimir Putin passed in Russia against the LGBTQ community, is it possible that the current Speaker of the House in the United States Congress, that he authored or had a role to play in that legislation? The evidence of Russian influence within the GOP is also mounting. When your Speaker and your President are beholden to your foreign adversary, you not only have a dictatorship because they control what legislation is passed and what's executed, you also have a colony of Russia, the Soviet Republic of America. In summary tonight, we've shown you that Mike Johnson's ties to Russia appear to run far deeper than previously thought linking him to two oligarchs through a decades-long push to decriminalize homophobia in Russia, in the United States, and the world. You could argue that Putin has the U.S. in a bit of a checkmate position right now, unable to perform its national security function and contributing to a possible defeat of Ukraine. 
Johnson needs to publicly explain his history of fawning to a Russian influence. And he should absolutely disclose any payments he received from the World Congress of Families or the ADF. And he needs to explain why on earth he'd want Ukraine to lose. One day, you'll tell the story of autocrats, crooks, and kings who came for our freedom. A story of citizens who stood up to tyranny and won. The people prevailed and renewed an old vow to a more perfect union. And that was just the beginning. The story continues. Narrative. Where truth lives.